I'm Stephen Capaldo of ICAD Unity Ministries. Welcome. Thank you for listening. We're continuing with Galatians 4. And uh, before we do that, Father, we would once again love to thank you for this day and this opportunity to uh, come forth with the word. And we ask that it will be a blessing to those who will hear it. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. So we did about the first half of Galatians 4. Uh, this is Paul's letter to his church in Galatia. He's not there physically. He's writing to them a letter and, uh, you know, giving them some advice. And we ended with the famous Galatians 4.16, Have I now become your enemy? Because I'm telling you the truth. Because Paul has noticed a difference, a different attitude in his congregation. You know, they seem to be very... Uh, uh, happy to take in the word you know like sponges you know taking in the word and uh, and uh, even when Paul was sick you know they appreciated his effort you know at teaching the word and then all of a sudden they got some more interested in just following the old laws you know and uh, they didn't seem so interested in the fresh revelation coming from Paul and Paul's starting to notice that that he's getting into some areas where the believers are in Galatia are not comfortable with and that very often happens in a church you know when a pastor gives a, a message or any any area where you communicating the Word of God where you say unpleasant truths or like the, the book that was written a few years ago an, an inconvenient truth well that's in the spiritual realm as well you know when when you teach something that is an inconvenient truth people rebel and that's all part of you know what it is to try to communicate truth whether you're a pastor or in any other role so we'll pick it up in verse 17 those false teachers are so eager to win your favor but their intentions are not good so Paul is saying you know I I'm telling you the truth I'm telling you for real revelation from the Word of God other people are just you know telling you things that you want to hear and that's you know this is not really uh, this is not really part of God's plan God's plan is that we should hear everything well we hear some things that we like to hear and we hear some things that we don't like to hear but your intentions are not good you're trying to get something and so you're saying what is convenient to say right they're trying to shut you off from me so that you'll pay attention only to them and, and this this really goes on we have this kind of uh, in, in the Christian world we have this kind of competitive Christianity where people compete for you know I'm teaching truth the other one isn't you know I'm, I'm gonna get these people and uh, uh, I'm gonna keep them away from you and you know we have this competition you know among different congregations which really it's it's totally contrary to the Word of God you know that uh, we're really we're not competing for people we're trying to spread the word of God and the people who uh, believe they can receive from someone they receive from that person and, and that's the way it is it's not about competition and it's not about uh, you know pretending that you know uh, one person has absolute truth and everybody else is just you know a little bit off you know just a false teacher in some way uh, otherwise what we're saying is that a, a human being could be perfect and a human being can't be perfect you know, we have this this free will desire to separate ourselves from God in a way that we refer to as sin. Uh, but you know, it's uh, the, the idea is you, you, you want to be able to stand before the Lord in the, at the end of it and say uh, that you did your best, and He says, "Well done, thy good and faithful servant." Um, that that's really what you want to be able to do. It's not this idea of perfection. That I, you know, I'm better than you, and I teach truth, and you don't, and I have more people than you, and that. but this is the way it is th throughout Christianity, throughout Christianity, no, no matter where, all all over the place. I, I don't think it's what we want if we're really, if we really want to spread the word of God. I don't think that's what what we want to do. If someone is eager to do good things for you, that's all right, but let them do it all the time, not just when I'm with you. So these people who just, you know, show off and, you know, try to get on the good side of people, Paul's saying, you know, that's hypocrisy. That's hypocrisy. Don't just say the convenient thing to, set, to get on someone's good side. Speak the truth in love. Yeah, you don't have to be nasty, but it is something that you're supposed to do, you know, to tell people the way you really see it, according to the Word of God. And, you know, people will come back with all kinds of things, and, and that's what Paul is saying. You know, and, and he's saying to his people, you know, you're just coming back with legalism. You're coming back with, you know, you've got to follow this law, you've got to follow that law, you've got to, you know, observe this season or that year or this, this holiday or whatever it is. You know, this is, what about truth and faith and grace and love and service? You know, what, what about all of that? You know, it, 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 it's fine to observe things if this is what Jesus puts on your heart, but what about the main point, which is all based on love? Oh, my dear children, I feel as if I'm going through labor pains for you again, and they will continue until Christ is fully developed in your lives. So that's the burden of the teacher, right? I wish I were with you right now so I could change my tone. 
but at this distance, I don't know how else to help you. So I'm going to really just kind of kick kick butt a little bit here. I'm going to give it to you, give it to you straight, and you're not going to like it. But this is uh, this is what I'm seeing, and so I am responding to what I'm seeing, and I'm doing it truthfully. Is that you're falling away from faith and grace, and and the the, the fully restored relationship through Christ Jesus, and you're getting back into you know just you know arguing and quarreling and rules and rituals and the things that are secondary. There's nothing wrong if you want to observe this or that, but it's the, 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 that law was given, uh, you know, the 613 at least, rules of the law, it was given by God as a step in the process of restoring the restoration between God and man, and uh, to teach us to, how to obey God and to obey the laws of the land, how to be good believers and how to be good citizens. That was the purpose at that time of that, that canon of law, 613 rules. Tell me, you who want to live under the law, do you know what the law actually says? The scriptures say that Abraham had two sons, one from his slave wife and one his freeborn wife. Uh, you know, like an unbeliever and a believer. The son of the slave wife was born in a human attempt to bring about the fulfillment of God's promise. So this is the, this is the idea of lack of faith. But the son of the freeborn wife was born as God's own fulfillment of his promise. This is the, 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 these are not just the, the births, but they are kind of images of lack of faith versus faith. Slave versus free. These two women serve as an illustration of God's two covenants. The first woman, Hagar, represents Mount Sinai, where people received the law that enslaved them, or that, you know, that they had to follow at that stage of restoration of the relationship. Sometimes uh, slave, you know, I might quarrel with that particular word, but it, 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 it kept them not free, right? They were not fully free. They didn't have the fullness of the relationship, the grace relationship that, that God has with us. And now Jerusalem is just like Mount Sinai in Arabia because she and her children live in slavery to the law. But the other woman, Sarah, represents the heavenly Jerusalem. She is the free woman and she is our mother. And you notice there the two Jerusalems. You can have sort of the human Jerusalem and the, the, uh, the heavenly Jerusalem. So you have, you have uh, the human Jerusalem is a lack of faith and the heavenly Jerusalem is faith. Uh, faith in God through uh, Christ Jesus. As Isaiah said, so here you go, old and new, and the prophecy is fulfilled, right? Rejoice, O childless woman, you have never given birth. This was Sarah at age 90, so it took her a long time, but then she finally made it, right? You know, her, she had the fullness of the faith and produced a child. Break into a joyful shout, you who have never been in labor, for the desolate woman now has more children than the woman who lives with her husband. So you can... You know, you can produce a child without faith, and you can produce a child with faith. And so it's really, uh, it, it, there are really two things being said here. Yes, they had children, but also the, uh, one was uh, in conditions of faith and the other in conditions of lack of faith. And uh, one uh, was in conditions of, uh, of freedom and one was in condition of uh, bondage or slavery or uh, you know, some kind of lack of freedom or only kind of relative freedom. It was not the fullness of the, of the restored relationship between God and man. And you, dear brothers and sisters, are children of the promise. So we're promised freedom by faith. And you, dear brothers and sisters, my congregants in Galatia, you are children of the promise, just like Isaac. Not like Ishmael, but like Isaac. But you are now being persecuted by those who want you to keep the law. In other words, to live, just to live under a set of rules instead of just to, uh, you know, enjoying your freedom in Christ Jesus. Keep the law just as Ishmael, the child born by human effort, without faith, in an environment without faith, persecuted Isaac, the child born by the power of the Spirit. So you have no spirit and spirit. You have uh, no faith, faith. You have the, the, the child born of no faith and the child born of faith. And of course, if you're 90 years old and have a child, I mean, you've got to have some serious faith to believe that you're going to have a child. And she did. She didn't give up. But what do the scriptures say about that as we close? Get rid of the slave and her son. For the son of the slave woman will not share the inheritance with the free woman's son. So if you have freedom in Christ Jesus, you have an inheritance. You have the richness and prosperity of the word of God. And he meets all your needs according to his riches and according to the plan that he has for your life, the will that he has for you. Right? Your needs will be met. And it's not some get-rich-quick scheme. It's by faith your needs are met according to his will for your life. So, dear brothers and sisters, we are not children of the slave woman, so we're not really as God sees us, we're not descended from that lack of freedom and lack of faith, 
we are children of the free woman. We are descended from free freedom and faith. It's just, do we believe it? If you don't believe it, you can't experience it. Believe it and experience it. So I'll stop there. That's chapter 4, Galatians. And uh, uh, I, I hope that it will encourage you really to explore and enjoy and experience your freedom in Christ Jesus. Now, thank you, Father, again for this, uh, this time for a message. And uh, uh, thank you for the ability to, to film uh, these things and share them with, with a number of different people. And we ask that your blessings will be upon them and that this will be edifying for them and they will be able to learn and apply. Thank you for everything you do for us each day, all the blessings you pour out on our lives. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Thank you very much for listening, and thank you, Betsy.